Hey, this is Stephanie O'Brien. A fellow artist on DeviantArt recently asked me how I draw fire, so I thought I'd give you a quick tutorial on here since I didn't already have one made up. So first things first, I select a round, fairly hard brush and an orange color like this. So I'm just going to draw a bit on a black background. Now it's not going to be super duper realistic, it's mostly more you know, webcomic level fire. But the next thing to do, I, you see I select the smudge tool over here. What the smudge tool is, it's, it makes a smear like that. And it can also soften up the edges of the fire, so I'm just going to do some streaks here like this. You can see it's already kind of taking on a more fiery appearance. This is the basic technique I use for fire or at least for the base of the fire. Usually fire is going to have more than one shade in it, so I'm going to switch to a yellower shade and add a second layer. And I'm going to make the paintbrush a bit smaller for this layer. Make kind of the heart or the core of the fire here. Once again, use the smudge tool to kind of blend it into the rest of the fire. Now if you want to go further, you can always you know, make additional layers, make it even brighter in the center. And of course the smaller layers in the center, they're going to be, you know, the brighter you get, the smaller you get with the paintbrush. Don't want to make it quite that green. I'm going to make that smudge tool a little bit smaller because it's making the streaks too big for this layer. There's a really basic way to draw fire. Now you can see that there's a little bit of smudging, you know, white smudging around the edges of the fire. It's one of the problems with Photoshop's smear tool. It kind of Tries to blend, tries a little too hard to blend it in with the background color and makes it intermediate color in the background. So um, one thing to note, it, how big you make these streaks will kind of depend on the speed of the fire. Like this is just kind of a fire that's sitting there. It's not really strongly affected by wind or anything. So let's say you've got a fire that's got some momentum. It's Say it's a fireball that's being thrown. So I'm going to just blend these layers together by hitting merge down. Then I'm going to make the fire, if it's got some real momentum to it, it's not going to have as much sway in the streaks of fire, because of course it's all being pulled rapidly in one direction. So for a fireball that's being thrown, I would still try and keep the streaks somewhat smaller and separate, but you can see I'd make it longer like this. I think I'd make the bottom longer too. You can see that looks more like a fire that's moving in a direction. It's got more of a rounded bottom, like it's careening towards something instead of just sitting on the ground. It's got longer streaks coming out of it. I'll make these streaks even longer. So the more momentum the fire has, the faster it's moving, the longer you're going to want to make these streaks. So these are kind of the basics of making fire. You can always play around with it. So you know, fire is kind of randomized in its shape, so there's no one specific shape you have to go for to make the fire look fiery. Just kind of use those basics, play around with them. Um, bear in mind, if you've got an object, say there was a log in the middle of this fire, the fire would probably be a bit more translucent and kind of wrapped around the log. I've got some references up here. So you can see with this reference over here, it's kind of wrapped around the log a bit. So. So the parts down lower, you can see that the center here is pretty much white, actually. I can see some white in the middle of that yellow. Whereas the parts on the outside, they're darker, they're oranger, and they eventually just fade right into black. Plus there are some separate parts, so if you wanted to have a more realistic fire, you'd... If it was, I guess if it was moving just all in one direction and it had some room to separate out, you'd have some streaks kind of separate from the rest. You could always just use the smudge tool to cut off bits like this. And of course you could always add smoke, you could add um, billowing smoke, and just add some here, add a layer underneath the fire. That's not to be too light. Once you 
once again, if it's too light, I'm just going to change the opacity. So you can have billowing smoke like this, or you can use the same smudge tool and to make it more trailing smoke. You could add uh, wind direction to it if you if the fire if the wind is blowing a certain direction, have the smoke kind of trail away like this. So I hope that gives you a basic idea of how to draw fire. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I know it's not super duper realistic fire, but I, I mostly draw for a webcomic, so a lot of my drawing isn't super realistic. If it was more realistic, I should be probably adding some more white in the middle, like in the reference photos. I generally recommend actually making each new layer of the fire separate, just in case you screw up and you don't like what you drew and you want to fiddle with it without ruining what you've already done for the fire. But once you've pretty much got the uh, general shape of it right, or you want to you know, transform the fire in a more coherent way, you know, transform all the fire at once instead of having to do it layer by layer, then you would want to merge down. And in Photoshop, if you want to merge down, you would use Control e Another thing about um, having different parts of the fire on separate layers, you can use the change opacity over here. If I decide that white part is too bright, I can just scale down the opacity, scale it back up. So those are a couple ways to play with it. You can also move that part independently. I decided it's too high up in the fire, just move it down a bit, before and after. Oh, there you go. Here's my basic fire tutorial. Hope that was helpful.